150 prophets of Baal were killed. The brother was at the peak of his ministry. Now, let's go to 1 Kings 19 that we've just read. Because you'll discover something about your assignment. That the greater the assignment, the greater the warfare. When God has blessed you, trust me, your assignment will be challenged. And the scary part is this. That sometimes your God-given assignment will be misunderstood even by those who are closest to you. Your assignment will be misunderstood even by those closest to you. Because anytime you discover your assignment, you will discover your enemy. And the greater the assignment, the greater the warfare. So now we come to 1 Kings 19. The brother is at the peak of his ministry. Ahab goes to Jezebel crying like a wimp. Scatterball, one is sweetheart, Barakawadi. Jezebel says, Scatterball, shh, what happened? He says, They killed the prophets. I think probably he said, They killed your prophets. The Bible said Jezebel was angry. Listen to this. And Jezebel sent a messenger. The woman was not there. She sent a messenger. And here was a message. Go tell that prophet that by this time tomorrow, he is toast. He's going to die. I'm going to assassinate him. Just go tell him that. The messenger comes in, tells Elijah. What does your Bible say? When Elijah heard the message from Jezebel, the Bible says, Elijah bound that spirit in the name of Jesus. Is that in your Bible? No, no, it's not in your Bible. Okay? When the messenger says, Jezebel is going to kill you, Elijah did a Jericho march. No, didn't say that. Okay, let's try another one. When Elijah heard the message, because he was at the peak of his, mount, of his ministry, when he heard that Jezebel wants to kill him, he fasted. No. Doesn't say that. The text says in 1 Kings 19, verse 2, when the man of God who was at the peak of his ministry, because of a difficult chapter in his life, because of pressure, he ran away. Wait a minute. Are we talking about his elder bra? In 1 Kings 17, he was kicking the devil's butt. In verse 18, he killed the prophets. This is the guy. He hears the message. He says, Arrivederci. It is vech tot sins kil tasala shapu. And he's gone. Are we talking about the man of God? Listen to me. Never permit pressure of any kind to reduce your personhood. Never permit pressure. Whatever kind of pressure. To limit, to lessen your personhood. He runs away. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You're under tremendous pressure right now. Let me start with some of you single guys. Some of you are single guys because of pressure. You get into the wrong relationships. My friend, never get in any relationship when there is pressure. Whether it is societal pressure, it is peer pressure, you get into a relationship because God says you must do it. We get into the wrong relationship because we feel pressure lies. I am 45 years old. Am I going to get married here? Jesus is coming back soon. Am I going to get married here? So anybody come, that's fine. Anybody come, I surrender all. And then you surrender everything. Never get in any relationship, listen to me, with a person who does not hunger for the voice of God. I don't care how cute they are. I don't care what kind of six pack they have. One day they'll be packless or pack zero. Never permit pressure to reduce your personhood. Some of us in our marriage, we are under pressure. They say after five years, your marriage must go through three rings. The engagement ring, the wedding ring, and then the suffering. ring. That's a tough one there. First five years of my marriage, Mamik and I, we're under tremendous pressure. We just came from the States, wanting to make a difference. We could not work, we couldn't find jobs. So we had to start the ICANN Foundation, but we had to survive. And our marriage was under pressure. Even though we were at the peak of our ministry, but we were under pressure. And I remember my wife saying to me, sweetheart, I love you, but you are no longer romantic. Speaking to thee, Dr. David Molapu. 
and say, say, it's still romantic. This is the brother with a PhD, not passing high school with difficulties. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a guy with a doctorate in philosophy. And he says, I'm not romantic. So what did I do under pressure? Listen to me. I went to ask for some advice. I went to a friend of mine by the name of one Blakey Swart. I said, one Blakey, I'm under pressure. How do you white guys keep the romance going even when you're under pressure? When Blakey was willing to listen and to share some thoughts. He says, you must write some notes and do this and do that. It was great. But I love this part, Brewer, when he said, we give our women flowers. I said, now you're talking. That's a revelation. Because you don't see duckies carrying flowers. It's for my wife. You know, it's for my flow. You know. We are not in this flower ministry yet. So I said, what do you guys do with the flowers? He says, Dave, you know the Bible. The first time the woman inhaled and exhaled, she was in the garden. So there is something spiritual about garden woman flowers. Come on, ladies. I need an amen. I'm trying. I'm trying. Come on. You know. So guys, there is something spiritual about garden woman flowers. So I said, okay, one Blakey, who do you need it in there? How do you do this flower thing so that you can reduce pressure? He says, very easy. We get the flowers. We put the flowers behind our backs with a twinkle in our eyes, forcefulness in our steps. We'll go to our missus, our women. I'm watching one Blakey. He goes in and then he knocks on the door. Until Ronel opens the door, one Blakey says, you know what? Here are the flowers. And the white lady's response is amazing. She goes like, wow. She hugs one blackie and lets him lens and didn't come. I don't know why white ladies do that. They always do this. Even on TV, have you noticed that? Bruce? They always hold that leg like this. So I watched this whole thing. I said, you know what? We are now in a new South Africa. All of us are equal, particularly as children of God. There's no black kingdom or white kingdom. It's all about one kingdom and the body of Christ. Hallelujah. If it can work for this white brother, it can work for me, man. Because at the end of the day, we have got the same bones, white bones. So Alma Fernando says, Vet Owens, we are white bones. We are all white people at the end of the day. So I thought, you know what? I want to reduce this pressure. You know what I did? One night, I waited until the sun set. Why? I did not want my chomis to say, What my gear now? What's happening? They've bewitched him now. What's happening here? So my friends were not there. I got flowers, brewer, real flowers, not plastic flowers, real flowers. I put the flowers behind my back with a twinkle in my eyes, forcefulness in my step. I went to my woman, to my Miki. I went up there and knocked on the door. She opened the door. I was just quiet. I just presented the flowers. Unfortunately for me, because I was still under pressure, there was a 20 seconds delay in her response. She was analyzing the situation. In her mind, I know this is a man of God, but what kind of weed did, did he smoke today? Flowers, David Mulapo, that's not synonymous. But thank God for the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. The Bible says when you don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit will speak on your behalf. The Holy Ghost spoke on, spoke on my behalf. She started smiling. She hugged me, a black woman, and didn't get her common. <laughs> Brothers, it bought me two weeks of productivity. Two weeks. But after two weeks, she put pressure. She says, hi, sweetheart. I said, yes. She says, where are the flowers? Some of us are under pressure. You look at your marriage. You said, I thought marriage was an ideal. But really, it's an ordeal. I'm actually praying for a new deal. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you're faced with pressure, number one, listen to me, my friend. Never allow pressure to reduce your personhood. A man of God. Notice one Ronnie. He did not even pray. He heard the news and he's gone. Women are powerful. The woman is not there. She just sent a word. Women are powerful. But don't be quick to judge Elijah. Because some of you here today, you heard a word and it put you under pressure. It took you from being a powerful person on your peak and it, it made you a pathetic person. A word from a doctor, you are HIV positive. A word from the doctor, you've got cancer. A word from the doctor, you've got two weeks to live. A word from your bank, we're going to repossess. Just a word messes you up. Your mascara gets messed up, your false teeth come up, your wig gets their car. A word. It runs away. But it does not end there. 
The Bible said he went to a good place. He went to Bathsheba of Judah, which is wonderful. It was not under the jurisdiction of King Ahab and Jezebel. It was a separate place. The Bible says Judea, Bathsheba of Judea. Judea is a place of praise. He went to the right place. But you will think that the man of God will stay up there and begin to praise God. No. What does the text say? He leaves his servant. And he goes to the desert. He leaves a place of worship. He goes to a place of wild spot. Anytime you are under pressure. I don't care what kind of pressure it is. The enemy will always try that you don't come to church. The enemy will be sure that the spirit of depression arrests you and you don't come to church. And you know that's what you need to come to. To church. He goes to a place of wild spot. He leaves a friend. When you're under pressure, let me tell you this, my friend. You need a friend. In fact, if the truth be told, you've got three kinds of friends. You've got a friend of the past. You've got a friend of the present. And you've got a friend of the future. When you're under pressure... You really know who your friends are. Because when you're under pressure, you don't want a person to take you to the past. Because the past is past. You are no longer a prisoner of your past. You are a pioneer of your future. The Bible says in Isaiah 43 verse 18, do not dwell any longer in the past. Because you see, the past is supposed to be a point of reference, not a place of residence. You come from there, but you don't stay there. It's the past. The blood of Jesus cast and reversed the curse in Jesus' name. Don't go back to the past. Say bye-bye to the friends of the past. Proverbs 13, 20 is clear. If you want to hang around wise people, you'll be wise. If you want to hang around fools, you'll be a fool. Then some of us, when we are under pressure, we need to be careful of the friends of the present. Because some of us, these friends that we think are friends, it's in your present situation where you realize that some of them are your present friends with conditions. They love you as long as they use you. They love you and appreciate you as long as they can control you and manipulate you. Then praise the air, praise God. But when tough time comes, they feel led of the Lord to leave. You need, my friend, in times like this, a friend of the future. This is a man or woman of God who look you straight in the eye and quote that scripture and says to you, do not be weary in well-doing because in due season you shall reap. You might fall right now, but when you fall, don't fall on your face. When you fall, you fall on your back because when you fall on your back, you can look up. When you can look up, you can get up. Why? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You need a friend like that. Who will speak well of you, even in your absence. They will petition the Lord. Oh Lord, touch Susie. Oh Lord, touch Womroni. Oh Lord, touch David Molapo. They will pray for you. But Elijah did not do that. So never permit pressure to lead you to the wrong places. Number three, before we pray. Never permit pressure to limit your provider. He goes up there in a pathetic stage. Finds a juniper tree, he sleeps. God wakes him up, he says, God, I am sick and tired. Ek es muh. As a lesson in Afrikaans, as je rest, je rus. I'm rusted, I'm finished. Wait a minute. First King 17, this guy was a hero. He was at the peak, at the top of his ministry mountain. First Kings 18, the guy was doing miraculous stuff. God was using him. Now because of a word from a Jezebel, he now wants to die. See, that's a problem with depression. The enemy wants to cut your assignment so that the spirit of depression makes you to commit suicide. How many of you have killed that dream for that business? Particularly some of us white people. You don't say people are white. They are pink people or they are their CDIs. The currently disadvantaged individuals, okay? I am a PDI. I'm a previously disadvantaged individual. But in church, we are all Bruce and sisters finish. But I've got to have a distinction because some of you, my white brothers and sisters, yes, there is BEE. Yes, we need to address the imbalances of the past. But the government is not your source. God is your source. Can I have an amen? Never limit your provider because it's all darkies up there. No, no, no. God is not limited by race, culture, or sex. 